todo lleno de sangre y el piso lleno de sangre. Estaba viva todavía ella. Y yo le dije, Bertita, Bertita, no te vayas, quédate conmigo, no te mueras, quédate conmigo, Bertita, Bertita. Mm. Quizás no pasó un minuto en que ella murió. No, fue muy rápido. In March of 2016, a gunman broke into the home of Honduran activist Berta Caceres and shot her in cold blood. I'm Malika Bilal. And I'm Omar Bedar, and you're in the stream. Now, Berta's assassination is part of a new Fault Lines investigation airing September 20th. The show looks into why so many land rights activists in Honduras are being killed. Just two weeks after that murder, another activist, Nelson Garcia, was shot to death. He had just returned home from helping people move their belongings after authorities evicted them from lands they had occupied. Four months later, the body of Lesbia Janeth Urquia was discovered in a dumpster. She went missing after going on a bike ride. And there have been several more attempts on the lives of lawyers, journalists, and others connected to land rights issues in the country. Activists say the culprits are not just local forces, but foreign governments and international development groups turning a blind eye to the killings. This year alone, the U.S. has pledged more than $100 million in military and humanitarian aid to Honduras. But now, several members of the United States Congress are pushing legislation to stop all military aid there until gross human rights violations are addressed. They say by sending millions of dollars to the Honduran police and military, the U.S. is financing the same forces found to be attacking and killing activists. Well, the sponsor of that proposed bill, Congressman Hank Johnson, is here in our studio. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you for having me today. Thanks for being here. Also joining us for this discussion in Oakland, California, Silvio Carrillo, a journalist and, a nep and the nephew of Berta Cáceres. And in Miami, Florida, we have Guillermo Peña Panting. He is a Honduran political analyst and economist. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Silvio, Thank you. I want to start with you. Actually, on my laptop, this is a headline we saw just a little bit earlier this month. Honduras, six arrests and the killing of environmental activist Berta Caceres. Silvio, how is your family taking this news and, and, and you know, this report that six people now have been arrested? You know, uh, our reaction is, is it's, it's a little mixed. It's we're very relieved that uh, people are being captured, but the problem is the intellectual authors are still out there. And the Honduras government has not given us uh, any, any clue, any ideas to what's happening in, this, in the investigation, as we are allowed to by Honduran law, which stipulates that we are allowed to be a part of this investigation and be informed of what is happening. They have, they have not done that. The Attorney General does not communicate with us. My grandmother just waits and listens by the radio every morning listening for news. Mm. So we're really disappointed in the, in the government. I mean, we have many reasons to be disappointed, but this is just another reason to be disappointed with them. Take us back, Silvio, for those who are, have not been following the story as closely. Where were you when you heard the news about your aunt? I was here and I received uh, several text messages from my mother. It was about 5.30 in the morning. And um, I, I mean, she couldn't even type the message coherently. And I called her and she was crying, of course. I then started reaching out to my, um, the community I know, the media community, to help um, because I knew what was going to happen next. I knew that there was going to be a lot of disinformation put out by the Honduran government. And I reached out to the US Embassy in Honduras, I reached out to friends in Washington. And I have yet to go to Honduras. I've been lobbying ever since, uh, trying to get uh, people to notice what's actually happening in Honduras instead of the lies that the Honduran government is putting forth. So, you know, despite the arrest, we have people online who are echoing your sentiment about uh, the government not doing enough. So we have uh, Ibrahim over here who tweeted in saying, apart from the killing, what is more unfortunate is the inability of the government to hunt, trace, and apprehend the killer to face justice. And they see this as, as part of a trend. Uh, Guillermo, do you think, would you agree with the characterization that there's a problem of impunity in the country? Well, no doubt that there, it's absolutely been a problem for a long time. And, and let me express my, my condolences to, to uh, Silvio, who um, I, I'm a grandson of a, of a murdered grandfather, um, who we also found who was behind uh, the murder, but not the intellectual uh, people who, 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 who 
sent the, the for whatever reason um, the kidnapping to happen so um, this is and this was in 2002 so this is not uh, a, a new situation that has happened in the country uh, nonetheless uh, the problem um, sadly when you put a name to it in the case of Berta Cáceres is is a problem that's been happening for a long time and, and very much linked to uh, land issues and the land issues has been a problem of a weakness in the rule of law in a weakness in protection of contracts and a weakness in the protection of private property uh, and that has sadly led to uh, violence and death. Mm. Congressman, I want to bring you in here um, with what the Honduran government has said. So I want to show all of our audience a little clip of Yuri Mora, who's a spokesman for the Attorney General's office. And uh, he told uh, Al Jazeera's Anjali, uh, a, a correspondent for Fault Lines, that the government is looking into the case. They've detained several people, as you've already heard, in, in Bircha's desk. Uh, I want you to listen to this exchange between Mora and Fault Lines correspondent Anjali Kamat. Here it is multiple incredibly powerful actors might be involved in Bertha Cáceres' assassination. So they want a completely independent international investigation that would be credible. They do not believe that this investigation will be credible. Muchos gobiernos sí creen en el Ministerio Público, en el trabajo que se está haciendo. La Unión Europea cree, Estados Unidos cree, Canadá cree y están apoyando con la parte técnica investigativa y con fondos. Entonces consideramos que si todos estos gobiernos y todas estas agencias creen en el Ministerio Público es porque se están haciendo las cosas bien. So as you can see from the subtitles there, he says the EU trusts us, the U.S. trusts us, Canada trusts us. You as, as a congressman and, you know, the U.S. House of Representatives, do you trust the Honduran government to look into these uh, allegations of rights abuses? Well, I've decided to take the side of the Honduran people and the Honduran people don't trust their own government to uh, render justice in this case because there's a long history of their being impunity for these kinds of acts of gross human rights abuse. And uh, they have gone unpunished, uninvestigated, uh, just covered over, and business continues. And so this is why strong action needs to be taken immediately to send a strong message to the Honduran government that the U.S. government will not be complicit anymore in this uh, human rights abuse of Honduran citizens by their own government. So you mentioned the strong action. I want to show our audience here uh, uh, this headline from uh, your website. Representative Johnson introduces the Berta Caceres Human Rights in Honduras Act. What, what drove you uh, uh, to pushing this forward? Well, we understand that the U.S. supplies a, a large, uh, in, in fact, the most money all of the money, as a matter of fact, for military and police um, aid uh, that is used um, to, quite frankly, uh, enforce the status quo, which is violation of human rights of the Honduran people. And so the way to get at this is to withdraw the money. And that's what the, um, that's what the bill would do, would be to suspend um, any aid for military and security um, equipment, training, uh, and support mm -hmm. uh, by the United States. And that would get the attention of the Honduran officials, cause them to start looking at human rights abuse cases seriously, mm -hmm. um, enable independent uh, investigators to come in to do the work that the Honduran government has shown itself in incapable of doing and to actually get to justice. So, Congressman, we did get a video comment here from Heather, who is a journalist who has covered human rights in Honduras. Check it out. So the bill in U.S. Congress is important in this context because it makes, it calls for making U.S. military aid to Honduras and support for loans from international multilateral institutions like the World Bank, uh, which, which often bankrolls controversial corporate projects in Honduras and elsewhere, conditional upon a thorough investigation, not only into Cassidy's murder, but also other cases. And thereby, this would um, end U.S. complicity in the ongoing human rights crisis in Honduras, which really flourished as a result of the U.S.-backed coup in 2009. So, Congressman, then Heather followed up with a tweet as well, saying, uh, wanting to ask you about the role of the U.S. in the 2009 uh, Honduras coup, and especially what Hillary Clinton's, what she describes as support for that 
Do you view the act as a way of making up for the U.S. not recognizing the coup at the time? Well, I think it was uh, certainly a mistake uh, for the U.S. not to recognize that a coup had taken place and a democratically elected president uh, deposed. Um, and, uh, and I think that our policies uh, can change. It'll take, um, it'll take people in the legislative branch, uh, such as uh, my colleagues and I, who see things a little differently and want to make changes in U.S. policy so that we can go to bed at night knowing that our dollars are being spent to support uh, human rights as opposed to, uh, to dump. Guillermo, and I'm wondering what you think of, of what the congressman is saying. I, I understand what, what, where, what his position is. Now, what, what does confuse me is that um, sometimes we, in Honduras, we have, and I'm talking as a, as a Honduran citizen, as a plain Honduran citizen here, we're, we're often confused in, in what is now coming on, for example, here on, on, on the protection for human rights or, or, or stopping aid there. And on the other side, um, getting so much pressure from the U.S. on the war on drugs. So. From one side, we get pushed to do more activity, military, straight military activity, and on the and, and to extradite people to the U.S. So Honduras has extradited, I think, 12 or 14 people in the last 18 months related to um, to drug charges, and we're the only one doing it, doing that in Central America. But then on the other side, we get the the human rights factor, which I think is very important as well. So just, I think it's hard to balance both of them out and, and it should be something that the U.S. government should be addressing and, and thinking about how to do that properly. And, and also mixing with that, uh, the there was a, an aid package in uh, the early 2000s um, known as the Millennium Challenge Account, which I think has been one of the best uh, run and, and applied uh, aid packages that Honduras has used as it was directly tied to indicators, um, on performance indicators, specifically on transparency, impunity, corruption, uh, economic development. Now, as they were, as, as these roads were built and projects were put together, then the 2009 problem with the, with the, the removal the, the of the 2009 problem, I like the euphemism there. No, no. So when the coup happened, what that did was immediately throw back the advances or any advance that had been worked on with uh, during the implementation of this of this aid package. So what did that do? As as the um, institutional instability came in, and he had that uh, you know that year of nobody knew what was going on. Mm. Um, you immediately start seeing on all indicators, Honduras gets thrown back on rule of law, mm. on on the protection of human rights, on, so, on Guillermo, everything else. I, I, so, I hear you there. I want to bring in another voice to because to pick up on your point about this balancing act and how difficult it has been. Uh, this is the voice of Salvador Rodesno. He is deputy chief of mission at the Honduran embassy in Canada. He's joining us now on the show. Uh, thank you so much for being here. What do you have to say on behalf of the Honduran government to these allegations? Uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, the, the unfortunate uh, uh, incident whereby um, Berta Kasser was murdered um, came out at, at, the, uh, at the time where we started to see some results of the efforts we are doing in order to uh, protect human rights promoters, uh, human rights workers, uh, judges, um, journalists uh, uh, from the, the the violence, from the um, uh, uh, this violence uh, brought by um, uh, 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 organized crime, and um, uh, we have uh, uh, recently issued uh, uh, a um, the Congress of Honduras have issued. A, 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 uh, a law for uh, protecting, and uh, we, we, we have discussed um, uh, the resources that uh, we need in order to uh, apply this law uh, with um, the um, uh, Journalist Association, with the Bar Association of Honduras, um, and, and uh, other sources. Actually, um, recently, about uh, a month ago, we have. Um, uh, uh, assign uh, resources from the national budget uh, to um, in, 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 in order to uh, uh, apply this law because we have um, mm -hmm. acquired this responsibility from the um, 
in, uh, Inter-American uh, Committee on, on Human Rights. And, uh, uh, and uh, we would like to go uh, further along with other, um, uh, uh, other efforts we are doing, including... Okay, so uh, I, I hear about those efforts. I, I want to pause this just for a bit because I know that our community is watching the show and they're watching you talk and they have their own thoughts. Omar, what are they saying? You know, we put out a question of whether um, organizations that do development in the country, like the World Bank, are doing enough to ensure that they're filling, fulfilling their responsibility towards human rights in the country. And we got very reactions that are very skeptical, like Leon over here, who says it's all about filling their pockets. Uh, if it's, if, as long as they're getting their pockets filled, then they can ignore issues like human rights. And then we have uh, Olasm over here who said, this is an odd question because it is often the World Bank and the IFC projects themselves that are violating human rights. Uh, Sylvia, I want to get your take on this. Do you see organizations like the World Bank as pretty much well-intentioned who happen to be overlooking uh, human rights issues on occasion, or do you see them as part of the problem? Well, they're not well-intentioned if they're overlooking it, are they? I mean, they, they seem to be just skating by and not worried about it, not too worried about it. I've had meetings with the World Bank, and, and they say, oh, we didn't know this was happening. Well, because they're not speaking to anyone on the ground. They're only speaking to upper-level uh, people who have no idea what's happening. That's, Additionally, that's, 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 that's just, hard to say. I think, I, just, I think that's I too general. To Sorry, but... Um, uh, Guillermo's trying to interject there. I, I, I want to give uh, Silvio a chance just to finish his sentence, and then we'll go to you, Guillermo. Go ahead, Silvio. Well, just uh, the chief of mission uh, said something about the Inter-American Commission, which I'm glad he uh, acknowledged, because they don't seem to be understanding what it means when the Inter-American Commission tells you to put protections on people. For instance, in 2013, they were told to put protections on my aunt. Mm. Guess who that was? That was two guys who showed up every three days to my grandmother's house to sign a piece of paper that they were there. Every three days. That, what kind of protection is that? Mm. Sorry. No. Thank you for sharing that. Guillermo. No, I, I, I understand where, what Silvio was thinking. But I, I've also had a, a share, good share of time spent with, uh, with both with developers and with um, with World Bank people and other other institutions, um, one of the first things that happened af af after after Berta's murder was that they all pulled back um, from all of the projects and sent a team to start meeting with every community where they had a project or where they were co-found co funding a project. Um, I think that was a really a wise thing to do um, to reevaluate everything, but. Um, there's, I want to go back to something that I said earlier, which was the protection of contracts and, and rule of law, weak institutions. At the end, why did this happen? Is it, a, is it, is it because the Honduran government wants to violate uh, uh, human rights? I don't think so. Well, I when think we I'm, have to I'm, get I'm, right. Guillermo, I just want to clarify. When you say, why did this happen, what are you referring to? What is this? Um, to Berta's murder. Okay. Directly to, more, to, 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 to her murder. Um, I think that, that we, have to, we have to go to, to right to why the problem exists and why the, the impunity and the lack of trust in the institutions. Uh, Honduras has had a really weak government for the 195 years that it's existed. It's never been good. We've never done great. So it, this isn't a new thing. But how do we move forward for, from that? Uh, we do have to, to start putting much more emphasis on the protection of rights, uh, human rights, property rights as well. Uh, you can't just do one over the other because some of these disputes that are happening, and this, is, this, this even goes to neighbors and not even talking about energy, uh, but, but people, the way people have to solve problems when a system doesn't work or is too slow or doesn't let you solve, which means that it's too expensive or it's manipulated, is eventually you end up in violence. Mm -hmm. yep. so, we actually, what, so we have to get back to the institutions. We have to start protecting the institutions. If the U.S. wants to continue doing aid, I think it would be a wise process if that aid is focused on strengthening institutions. Yep. I, I do see we, some of that sure, happening. You have to deal with we, do right have people who are, that. we do have people online who are skeptical about what cutting off that aid might actually do. So we have El Sami over here who tweeted in saying, even if the U.S. stops giving military aid packages to Honduras, will that really stop the killings of human rights advocates there? Congressman, is the, the proposal to end that aid, is it just to end U.S. complicity, or do you think that we have enough leverage, uh, the, does the U.S. have enough leverage to actually affect the human rights situations there on the ground? Yeah, when it's U.S. money that is put on the ground to the Honduran government, which then purchases arms from U.S. companies, and then uses those arms and uses the training to suppress the people, 
then you know there's a major problem that we as American citizens have to take responsibility for, and um, I think that's what uh, that's what the Berta Cassetta's uh, Human Rights in Honduran Act would start to bring about would be for us as Americans to take responsibility for our part in, uh, in the situation in Honduras and indeed in other nations around the world. It's important that we change the, uh, that we change U.S. policy to promote more human development as opposed to, let's mm. say, industrial development. Mm. So uh, when you talk about taking responsibility, I, I want to share our audience just a little clip uh, from the Fault Lines investigation, because uh, there are some who say even when people try to take responsibility, there are loopholes uh, that other companies and organizations can get around. So the International Finance Corporation, or the IFC, has stipulated that companies, and especially one of the companies at the center uh, of this environmental fight in Honduras, uh, that they make sure that they have guards, but that the guards cannot be armed. So I want you to take a look at what this investigation found. ¿Por qué necesito eh, una base militar de, dentro de la plantación? Mm, por seguridad. Hay bastante armas en la comunidad ahí. Eh. Son células guerrilleras ellos. Eh. ¿Y Dinant no tienen guardias? Tienen, pero los guardias solo vienen en la noche, pero no andan armas ellos. Eh. No los protegen. So your main purpose here is to protect Dinant and protect the local population or just Dinant? Protege la propiedad de ellos. So, Silvio, you see there the guards can't have arms, but the military is there guarding the property. And, of course, they're very heavily armed. And an investigation in State Department records show that they also receive, as the, as the congressman uh, noted earlier, they receive U.S. funding for training. Um, so, Silvio, what goes through your mind when you see that? Well, a lot, as you can imagine, but uh, something that people have been saying on the ground in Honduras for, for decades is that the U.S. continues this policy of engaging with bad actors. You know, the, the reason my aunt was able to come to prominence, and I am no great fan of his, and I always thought he was a bit of a jerk, was Celaya. Like, Celaya actually helped her, her organization get off the ground and gave them a little bit more leeway to speak and come to prominence. Well, he's not perfect, but he's actually doing something for the people in, in Honduras, so the, especially the, God, the amount of impoverished people in Honduras is colossal, as you know. And so I get very frustrated when I hear this because the U.S. military, I mean, that's the only reason why they're so heavily indebted, um, invested in Honduras is because they have lots of bases. It's a great point to to uh, uh, to monitor the rest of Latin Central America and Latin America, the drugs, and so they're 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 giving a lot of money to the military, mm. to to the Honduran military, to arm themselves so and to I, quote unquote protect. I, I want to give Salvador there a chance to respond to that, Salvador. Well, you know, it has to deal. Uh, the issue here is we have to address the the issue that generates this uh, social conflict, and um, that's a corrupt looking, government. Uh, well, but it's, it is. It's, uh, it's the, a lack the issues, of rule of law. Uh, that, well, those issues we have right. to address. Well, that's the same them. thing. That is a corrupt government. So, lack of uh, rule of law way. is the same thing as a corrupt but, government. I, I hear you there. But, 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 but we have to we have to um, address those issues, fundamental issues, uh, in, in a in a civilized way. Uh, and, and, and the thing is that we have to um, is that what her murder down, is? Uh, you know, just a minute the. The, the companies and the communities have to sit down in a way to 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 so they can both benefit. Uh, they can they can feel they can um, they're obtaining benefit from from this project. Um, and we are looking the people uh, from to, to the example. Silvio is shaking his head there. I, I hear you, Salvador, and I see Silvio shaking his hair, the head there in, in disagreement. Unfortunately, we have to leave the conversation here. We are all out of time for this conversation. But for more on this, check out the Fault Lines investigation, Honduras, Blood and the Water. It airs Tuesday at 2230 GMT. A big thank you to all of our guests for joining us here today. Congressman Hank Johnson, Silvio Carrillo, Guillermo Peña Panting, and Salvador Rodesno. And of course, to our community, Omar, see you next time. Thank you.